Greetings one and all. Yes, Professor Williams here still talking about confidence intervals. But this time it's confidence intervals with a twist. Let me tell you why they have a twist. Because you're working along in your confidence interval problem and you all of a sudden look down and say, but I don't have the population standard deviation. Well, we need the population standard deviation, don't we? Because that's what goes into that standard error sigma divided by the square root of n, what am I going to do? I can't go any further. That's why it's with a twist. Twist with a T. Because when you don't have sigma, you'll have S, the standard deviation of the sample. And in the alphabet, last time I checked, T came after S. So you remember that S and T right next to one another when you don't have sigma, you're simply going to use the standard deviation of the sample and then use the t distribution with degrees of freedom simply calculated by n sample size minus 1. Don't believe me? Let me show you. All right, we've got an owner of a farm who wants to estimate a 95% confidence interval. Remember, 95% confidence interval simply wants to know the lower and the upper range between which 95, whoa, 95 percent of the data will fall, right? And what he wants to know is he wants the 95 percent confidence interval for the number of tin cans that the goats living on his farm eat per week. So he goes out, he randomly samples 20 goats, finds that on average they eat 20 soda cans per day and since he's the one who drew the sample he's calculated the standard deviation to be two cans. So in order to be certain that he has enough cans lying around his farm he wants to calculate this 95 percent confidence interval for the mean number of cans eaten by all of his goats. In other words the goat population. Well all he has is a standard deviation for these 20 goats on his farm. Well, what he does have is he has the mean, doesn't he? Right? We just said that he took a sample, a sample of 20 goats, found on average they ate 20 soda cans per day. That is X bar. Right? We also said it had a standard deviation of 2 cans. That's S. We knew that he took the sample of 20 goats. That's his N. So now I have calculated and have a numerical value for everything. I have X bar, average of 20 soda cans per day. I have S, standard deviation of the sample of those 20 goats is 2. N, 20 goats in his sample. Mu, I've got everything except for this weird looking thing called T alpha. Well, as soon as I said alpha and you saw alpha, remember our little fish? Alpha, little fish with the tail. The tail of the alpha is the same thing as the tail of the curve. And I'm betting that we have a table for this, don't we? Yeah, we do. Let me show you what it's going to look like. We're simply going to use a student's t-table because since we're using the standard deviation of the sample, everything is driven by how big our sample is. So in earlier in the video, I said degrees of freedom, right? Degrees of freedom, DF, calculated simply by n minus 1. How many goats did he sample? He sampled 20, 20 minus 1, last time I did my math, was 19. So, first thing you're going to do, take the number in your sample, subtract 1, come up with your degrees of freedom. Next, determine what confidence interval we're solving for. Well, in this case, the problem told you that we want the 95% confidence interval. See right here where I've got this arrow? 95% confidence interval. 
So come down to where your 95% confidence interval meet is in your column and it meets degrees of freedom at 19, bingo. 2.093 is the value for a T distribution with 19 degrees of freedom, 95% confidence interval, 2.093, Write that number down somewhere because I'm getting ready to use it. There you go. That's all I had to do. All I had to do was drop in that 2.093 for that T sub alpha value. Because like I said, since this is based on sample size and degrees of freedom, you don't have the same standard values that we did when we had sigma. Remember I told you before and you all remember that for a 95% confidence interval Z alpha sub 2 is going to be 1.96. For 99% confidence interval it was that 2.58. Well in the T distribution when we do not have sigma and have to substitute S sample standard deviation we have to go look up our value for this T portion of the formula every time based on sample size. So now I'm going to fill in the blank and I'm going to solve and we're going to see how many what the 95% confidence interval is for the true average number of soda cans this guy's goat these this guy's goats eat in a given day. Now all I have done through the magic of being able to pause this thing is I've simply substituted into my formula. Remember we said X bar was right here. It was my, on average, 820 soda cans per day. We got this 95% confidence interval number off of the T, t chart, the student's T distribution. The sample had a standard deviation of two cans. Substituted that in for S. We took a sample of 20 goats that was the N that goes underneath the square root. So now remember, this is going to be the upper end of the interval, whatever number, because that's the plus side. This is the minus side. So this one is going to go over here. So when I take a look at solving, simply remember that the result of all of this is simply going to be the value on the curve to the right or the large side. This one is simply going to be the value to the left or the small side, negative side, that delineates and that indicates that 95 percent confidence that the mean number of cans eaten by all of his goats, the goat population, will fall between this lower number and this upper number. Let me do some math real quick. All right, all I've done now at this point is I simply took two, two divided by the square root of 20, gave me this 0 0.447. I'm going to multiply it by the 2.093. Remember, that's the number that we got from the T distribution. 95% confidence interval. 220. That's horrible looking. Minus 1. My 19 degrees of freedom. So, now that I've done taken that, um, that piece of math, 2 divided by the square root of 20, times my 2.093, I end up with this. Remember, this is going to be this side over here to the right is going to be this. Remember, this is always my positive side of the curve. It's always my negative side. So I'm going to add to the mean to come up with this value. I'm going to subtract from the mean to come up with this value. And what I know is I now know the 95% confidence interval 
for the mean number of cans eaten by the entire goat population. All right, so now that I've done that, what I've done, what I've come up with, I've come up with the 95% confidence interval. It's between 19.06 and 20.94. That means is there is a 95% probability that the, the true actual average number of cans eaten by the entire goat population per day is between 19.06 and 20.94. There is a 0.025% chance that I'm either off on the upper side or up on the lower side because remember that 95% is in the smack middle of the distribution and if I want to be more certain than that, that I've got to change that confidence interval percentage to go to say 99% or 90% or 80%. But we solve these the exact same way that we did knowing the standard deviation of the population. Only difference is, is these are with a twist or a T because I only have the sample standard deviation, not sigma. It's been great spending time with you guys, and I will see you around the camp.